Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. October 11th, Robert Hamill Nassau. On this date, in 1835, Nassau was born in Pennsylvania. But for 45 years, he worked in various parts of Africa as a missionary, a medical doctor, a scientist, an explorer, a pioneer, and a prolific author. Nassau sent large collections of cultural artifacts to the University of Pennsylvania and Princeton for study, and he was the first to send a gorilla carcass to the United States. As of 1891, Nassau was the only scientist to supply perfect gorilla brains for anatomists to study. And if you're an anatomist, I guess that's a big deal. Nassau also wrote many thick volumes with illustrations about life in Africa, and the man translated the Bible into Benga, the language of West Equatorial Africa. Fear can paralyze a man who lacks trust, but a Christ follower can stifle fear. Robert Nassau lived among the native people of West Africa with his family and three groups. New native Christians, natives who liked the missionaries, and a group of natives who hated the missionaries and wanted to drive them out. In his writing, Nassau referred to these unhappy natives as heathens, and he had to find a creative way to negotiate with them since they believed in spirits, curses, and witchcraft. One Friday afternoon, a group of heathens converged on the village and demanded the villagers charge the missionaries higher prices for their produce. Nassau had always been able to settle issues by open discussion, so he politely declined the price increase. But Nassau's quiet confidence infuriated the heathens. Immediately, they invoked the power of Yukuku and made a new law with these three parts. Number one, no more food should be sold to Nassau. Number two, no native should work for him. And number three, Nassau would not be permitted to drink from his own spring on the mission's premises. The law of the Yukuku was rooted in superstition and witchcraft. It was created by a secret society of men and was designed to cause fear and submission. So for a native to fetch water from the spring and bring it to the missionaries became a crime punishable by death. The Christian natives who normally worked with Nassau were caught in a dilemma. They would have to defy Yukuku or break their agreement with Nassau. In response to this, he decided to remove the conflict. He refused to ring the come to work bell. Nassau said, quote, staying away from the spring would seem to be bowing to a power which he had always preached against, which was based on a lie and which stood in the eyes of the African as an idol. The next morning, Nassau made a public demonstration against the Yukuku law. He went to the spring and drew up a bucket of water. The spring was several hundred yards from Nassau's house through a winding jungle path. From a hiding place in the vegetation, a spy jumped out at Nassau and tried to knock the bucket away, but Nassau outmaneuvered him. The spy viciously thrust his spear at Nassau's back, but somehow the point couldn't touch Nassau. Neither the spy nor Nassau could see what had stopped the spear. That day, Nassau carried the water home in triumph. The Bible says in Psalm 46, verses 1 through 3, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and when the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. The young spy ran off to raise a mob but his heart wasn't in it. The demonstration of protective power made the younger heathen see they had gone too far. He rallied with the Christians to protect the mission and even warned Nassau about the mob on its way. Before Nassau could join his wife, the mob opened fire on the premises. Rapid shots were exchanged. Nassau crossed an open space to get his wife and locked the door behind him. It was a short, angry, bloodless fight of less than 20 minutes, and the Yukuku was defeated. 
He said, side by side, Mrs. Nassau and I knelt and felt too deeply for words that God was our refuge, a very present help in trouble. Looking back on the day, Nassau saw that the Christians of this village were becoming noble and courageous. God was rearranging the way the natives thought. Robert Nassau's response was to give all the glory to God. Fear can paralyze a man who lacks trust, but a Christ follower can stifle fear. Do not let fear dictate your next move. Place your confidence in Jesus. He will empower you to silence that fear. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.